So I would like to ask you to give us your opinion on what the pet systems can do to, to tackle or to try to overcome all these challenges. We could talk about upskilling, reskilling, and several other issues. So may I suggest that we start with Stuart? What do you think about these issues, Stuart? Well, yeah, my suggestion is you can't tackle all of those things. They're way too big. But if you pick one area that you want to focus on, and like sustainability, maybe it's agricultural sustainability, uh, maybe it's training people in one area of, uh, of clean energy. But I think you have to take something where you think there's a, there's a shortage, where there's, where there's a lack of, of knowledge or a lack of programs and so you can develop something new. I mean, that's a little bit too big an issue to handle just you know, in its entirety. You have to almost choose one area of it that you can have some impact and find some colleges that are working in these areas and see if you can get the support to try to figure out how to take it one step farther. <laughs> Thank you. But you have to, I think you have to focus on, on something much more specific to have an impact. Yeah. This is indeed a very intelligent answer. <laughs> Thank you very much. And Sue, can I ask you the same question, the same open question? I guess from, a, from an educational perspective, what we're seeing is a lot of uh, cross-disciplinary cross um, skills that are needed. So cybersecurity is now needed in most of our sectors and IT skills that are needed in most of our sectors. And so as we look at you know, our, our manufacturing companies and, and you know, our energy companies, and, and we're seeing that overlap of skills. And so we, we're trying to not only change our curriculum to better align with what those future careers are going to be as best as you know, our employer partners can tell us, we're also looking at micro-credentials to use to upskill the current workforce because they don't need to go back and retake everything, but they do need these new digital skills. And I really think that um, you know, it's, it's going to be similar to when the uh, when computers became uh, accessible to everyone, uh, that, that jobs are going to change, but, but there are still going to be a lot of new jobs created. And we just have to be ready for that and, and flexible, as Dirk has said, um, to change, to, to make that happen. <laughs> Thank you, Sue. I like your optimism. And Dirk, Sue has been talking about interdisciplinary work, and she has been talking as well about yeah, working across different disciplines and so on. So can I have your views on that? Are you doing something? Are you working as well with micro-credentials with, I don't know, can I have your views? In what Sue was just men mentioning, I think it's really important that we're able to upscale and uh, give a lot of uh, people some different modules um, just a small parts of training uh, on the, what is really necessary at the moment and not a full length education. Um, but we still have a long way to go from the, uh, to do that. It's really, uh, it's regulation that's really in our way to, to do so. But we see a lot of more integration within health and technology, for example. So we have some, some good examples of uh, combining those two worlds, yeah. Okay, so thank you, ben. thank you very much, and thank you very much to the three of you for your time and for sharing with us your views and your experiences and the work you are doing and the work you've done. It, it has been a real pleasure to have you here, and yeah, just say thank you to you again. And now let's move to the next part and the last part of today's event.